the elephant. Someone said, to eat an elephant, you've got to eat the elephant one bite at a time. So if 78% of the businesses are actively using social media, and more than 24 hours of video are uploaded to YouTube every day, this suggests to us that maybe we need to look at this YouTube thing a little bit closer in terms of how can we get some value from it, how can we exploit or leverage that particular resource. So, some of the tools in social media and in just-in-time e-learning. We've got Facebook, we've got Twitter, everybody knows that, we've also got YouTube. We've got Pinster now. So, um, um, why is that, why, why is this thing so interesting to people. It's absolutely phenomenal. In a 12-month period, the number of hits that they are having on a daily basis is just extraordinary. Why? Because people want to share. We're communal creatures. We call it social media, but we're missing the tactile nature of, of social interaction. So what are people doing? They're sharing their pictures. They're becoming much more intimate because they want the intimacy, but don't necessarily want the contact. And because they perceive that this environment is safe, In order to deliver content, or if you like, an outcome for a consumer who's searching using Google, we talked about phishing earlier. Pinsert or Facebook is like the bait to get their attention because it's at the top of the searches. If you search something, you'll find something other in Pinsert, or you'll find it usually in Facebook or Twitter or something like that. The trick is how do you get up the rankings? How do you get to number one page? Uh, on Google or Chrome or, or whichever search engine that you're, you're using. YouTube is the hook because right now why YouTube is so important is because the bandwidth allows it to be. We couldn't use YouTube 10 years ago because the telecommunication infrastructure didn't facilitate it. That's why we're now using YouTube. And, and anybody in any business have either got a Facebook presence, they've got a, uh, a YouTube site, also but well, what all that's doing actually is a way to get you into their website so that you can nurture the relationship. Because you're not going to sell anything just through Facebook in the first instance. People have got maybe 11 second term of, of, uh, of uh, attention, span of attention. The same thing with, uh, with YouTube, you get much longer. If you, if you like what you see in YouTube or you're in some place and you see something different, you'll stay with it maybe for five minutes. But ultimately, the, the, the intent, the commercial intent of Facebook and YouTube is to get you to a website. And the website, perhaps, a cheap one would be you get WordPress with the different themes and the different plugins, and away you go. You can get your business, your online real time business, knocked off for about $200, 100 pounds, using third party resources. They're all out there Fiverr and, and, and a number of other resources. So you can get all that stuff done. You don't actually hire somebody to build a website for you for 500 bucks, which is really an internet brochure. That's no longer the case. All you actually need is one page, and I'll show you something in a moment that validates that. This guy here, his name is Brendan <coughs> Bouchard. He has developed this thing called Experts Academy. I actually, I saw this and I went, I actually went to San Francisco for a weekend to see what this is about. 800 people in there, academics, business people, former accountants, former salespeople, doctors, dentists, they all had an insight that they wanted to convey to the public. They were experts, and really what it came down to was, how can I, as an individual, deliver my content out there to a public that might be interested in what I've got to say? So it's not so much about me bringing it out there, but what you have to be able to do is line yourself up in the crosshairs of the people who are actually searching for your content. In other words, it's like think of this PC here as my website or my web presence. I actually got to move that around, figuratively speaking, such that when we're searching, they land on it. The biggest challenge we have with the internet is uh, the good news is that it gives us access to a lot of information. The bad news is there's a lot of information that can confuse and stun people. Has anyone ever heard of the cone of silence? <laughs> Has anyone ever heard uh, of an agent called uh, 86 or 99? Has anyone ever heard of uh, a character called Get Smart? Mm -hmm. All right, Get Smart 86 was his, agent 86. 
99 was the, the woman behind him who actually did all the work. And she was the brains and everything. He was the husband to his wife. But when this particular comedy about secret agents, in order for them to have a secret discussion, they had this thing called the silence. What the cone silence was is that they go up to the top of the skyscraper building. They'll stand there. A helicopter will come along and bring this big cone and hover over them so people can't eavesdrop. That was the cone of silence. What we've got right now and today in the business and arena and, and in the internet in general is a scenario where people are in a hailstorm of, of uh, stuff coming at you. You know, buy, buy this, buy that, read this, read that. It's very hard to get found in a, in a hailstorm. So this notion of a cone of silence is how can you create this cone around so that people can actually see you in the first instance and have time to engage with you in the second. So what, what this is about, what this guy here does, he says, get free deep dive training videos including 10 essential steps <coughs> to become a millionaire sharing your advice and knowledge with the world. Okay? These exact strategies helped me start from scratch and make 4.6 million when I first began in 18 months, it was 4.6 million in 18 months. Enter your information below and get instant access right now to the insights about how I did that. That's what you call a hook. Okay? And if someone, and so what he, what he has done, and he actually, by the way, produces nearly all of this stuff himself. Last year, I think he did 10 million across five different niches, five, not four, but five different niches. And what he does is, he, he actually, this is the same guy who's had two books on the New York Times bestselling list in the last two years and never used a publisher. He's just used social media. If you think about an academic who's trying to get their brilliant work out there, but it just gets buried in, in, in some library or something. You've got wonderful insights on sustainability, experiential learning, climbing the, climbing the hill in Himalaya, doing experiential learning, or whatever it might be. This, uh, this is a strategy that's, that's, that's getting your content out there. It's not just a book, but let me tell you what he's doing. How, what did I do? He, gave me the second book for $7, hardback. The first one was for $9. Why did he do that? Because his strategy is a strategy, not an opportunistic exercise. What he did was, he said, I give away my book for $5 or $6, which is the cost of actually sending it and posting it. Because if you like that, you might then be predisposed to taking on the e-learning program that I've got which would cost $197. And then you may be interested in going to the seminar, which would cost about $1,000. Okay. This is a different model for, for how e-learning is delivered. And that is actually e-learning, and his stuff is, is excellent. He's a former Accenture consultant. But what he's done, he's looked at best practice everywhere. And I'm, just, I'm just sort of looking under his hood and thinking, how, how did he do this stuff? And how he actually does it is as follows. If you think about this notion here. This, by the way, is a pinstrip um, page. And so how, what you're trying to do here is, is harvest people's interest. So what, what, what we do is we, uh, in, in terms of social media, these are the, the key areas. Words, pictures, dialogue, video, engagement, e-learning, and payment. Because I've got five minutes less, and there's probably four now. I've got to move through the, the latter part of this. I'll just show you what this looks like. Here's the sequence of how you actually monetize your content. You send out a Twitter uh, feed, you, got, you build up a community, and you make some reference to something, or you quote someone who's, who's credible. For example, I send out a, a Twitter feed that says, Harvard Business Review, or sorry, Harvard Business uh, College is now <coughs> using the, the mammal principles of experiential learning. I got some feedback, is that true? Yes, it's true. They haven't actually said it, but in fact, that is exactly what they're doing because the case-based method is no longer valid. It doesn't do the job anymore for exactly the point you made, which was that you can't, it's not usable in its current state because things are changing so quickly. And also, the, the Harvard business model is more like giving someone a fish while mammals we know is teaching you how to fish. Interestingly enough, experiential learning, my, my most recent uh, um, induction into that was in the ap Apple shop when I bought my Mac. That's exactly what they did. They did experiential learning. They never demonstrated anything. They got me keying stuff in, in editing videos that I actually got my camera in. And they did all of that in 45 minutes because I arrived 15 minutes late. I had a, but they were still able to do it in 50, in 45. <coughs> okay. So the process, you set out a Twitter, 
And, and what you do is you point to maybe something like this. Then from there, if, you, if, you, if you're familiar with this whole Pinterest approach, then you can hook into Facebook. And Facebook has got a new approach that they're using, which is a timeline, which allows you to now give insights about your value proposition. This is how you start front-loading it, giving some valuable content that people can use immediately. Or then you can point them to your YouTube site, which gives them more detail. Now they're engaged. You're, now you're nurturing the relationship. You're building trust. You're overcoming the obstacle of no, no need. You're giving them help. You're, you're, so now you've overcome four obstacles, three of the four obstacles. No trust, because people have, have said, look, John, look, and uh, Chris said this is good, so it must be, because I trust Chris. That's why I will now uh, engage with this. So no trust is overcome, no need, because yes, it's relevant to what I want to do because I'm a carpenter, and a little Johnny wants a new tree hut. That's what these all the different varieties of tree huts. No help is, this video then shows me how to actually do some carpentry to build a, a tree hut, or the essentials of building a tree hut, or any, or any subject for that matter. Then I need to engage. So what you want to do here at this point, this is a critical part of it, you want people to opt in. So you get their email address. So now you can nurture the relationship further and add more value, front load your value add. So what happens is that if, if they don't, don't buy your book or whatever it might be, or your training program or whatever it might be, at least what they're saying is that, yeah, I'm still with you. I may not be ready right now, but I'm still with you. And you can give them your newsletter. Or you can bring them to a webinar which says, here's some valuable information for you that you can use that's just going to improve your position relative to management, learning, and leadership, or whatever your subject matter is. And at that point, you've, now you've got another chance to monetize. Or in terms of payment, find out more. Okay, um, I will have this access for three days, and I'll pay you $5 for it. I'll try, I don't want to invest, we'll try it for free. We'll give you free access for a week in, on module four. Or I want to buy it now. That's basically the model. <coughs> this is what this guy Brendan Burchard did, and this is what most people are doing, and this is how you get uh, your, how you monetize your content or your e-learning. There is this notion here, this, we're actually at a, this, this 80, 20, and I know I've got one minute left. This is the gold rush. And I was at this place in, uh, outside Melbourne called Ballarat or called uh, Sovereign Hill. I went on a tour. They explained to me that the people who made the money in the gold rush, 5% were the guys who arrived early and spent a lot of the work digging away the topsoil and picking up the, the gold nuggets. 80% starved. 15% made the second highest amount of money. Why? Because they provided the infrastructure provided the hotels. Women actually did, uh, did the best in, in the gold mines. Why? Because they're the ones who brought the seeds from overseas and planted the vegetables because people got to eat. So food, shovels, shelter. So that's really what this whole thing is about. You've got to decide for yourself within your content, what is your critical 5%? What's the, what's the 5% people are more inter most interested in? And if they're interested in, in that, how do you get yourself in front of them? Final, final slide or so, you can, become, you can be involved or you can be committed. And this is how the commitment means attract, get found, capture attention, and get paid. That's the process. It's quite simple. So hopefully you've got some scenarios uh, to think about. This piece here is the final slide. Chris obviously didn't do any contrarian stuff, so I'm going to blame him. But basically, this whole notion is around the cloud app exchange. And, you know, we put a humor here, but actually right now you've got Apple and you've got Android. The Android are non-Apple devices that allow you to do all of this mobility stuff. Even bars and clubs and everybody's got a mobile app. That's how we're going to do business. That's how we're going to advertise. And that's pretty much uh, the final part of my presentation. So thank you. <laughs> In that presentation, I've got it in a um, uh, PDF format, slides. So this, that, that's my um, email address there, enda at 4or-ce. 4 means the right people doing the right thing at the right time in the right place, cost effectively. That's what that stands for. So send, send me your email address, because I'm not just going to give it to you for free. I want something in return if you can send me value on this. And you will get the, the full slides in PDF format. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you.